Welcome to the Appetite for Discussion show with your host, Brendan Crouch. Thanks, man. And just like that, we have Mr. Darren Spicer. How you doing, man? Good. Thank you, buddy, for coming on. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So you are the owner of Clutch Coffee. That is, is that correct? correct? In Mooresville? Yep. We have two locations in Mooresville. Uh, one is off Highway 150, across from QT, and the other one is over next to uh, Publix off Williamson Road. So how did uh, – are you the owner of the brand of Clutch, or is that a franchise? No, that's uh, – my business partner, John, and I are the brand as well. So. Oh, wow. So um, you are the Clutch. Yeah, we, we are Clutch, yes. Wow. Um, yeah, so we started – John and I worked in drive through coffee on the West Coast for 10 and 12 years each. Um, had a passion for people and for coffee. And uh, the company we worked for stopped offering franchises, so we decided to branch out, do our own thing. And that's kind of how Clutch was born. So the idea was four years ago. took about two and a half in the making to get it here. And then um, the human being used to be where the two locations are that we have now. Uh, That gentleman wanted to retire, so we uh, overpaid him to take over his his spot and uh, shut it down, gutted it, rebranded it, and Clutch was born. So... uh, the Clutch franchise, is it right now the two locations, or are there other locations? Those are just the, the first two. The first two. Um, yep, and we actually just met with the city of Greensboro today on a third potential location. Wow. Um, and then we're actually actively looking on a, a couple leases right now, actually down in Florida as well. Get out of here. Grow. Yeah. Congra- yeah so, so really and truly, you've been hitting the ground running for 18 months. Yep. And yeah. so with the 18 months, you've got the two stores and a potential with one to three more stores. And Correct. And going all the way down to Florida. Yeah. So what what is it that drew you to coffee? So when I was 18, I got into it. Uh, I worked at a grocery store before that, which was nothing exciting. Yeah. Bagging groceries and whatnot. Um, hey, you were a bagger? I oh, was yeah. a stock boy. Yeah, you I might was, as well have been. I been. was the bottom of the barrel. Uh, <laughs> you were Hugh Hefner. Yeah. I was back there sticking the beanie weenies. <laughs> Pull all ones to the front, kid. <laughs> uh, so I did that, and that sucked. And uh, and I got an opportunity to work. I, I, would, <laughs> I was working in... The grocery store and there was a coffee kiosk inside mm-hmm. and there's all these attractive girls that were working there and their tip their tip jar is just flowing over and i'm bagging groceries and pushing carts and a bunch of bullshit and i'm like <laughs> man like that looks like a lot more fun so i asked one of them like hey how do i get a job here um she was super helpful helped me uh get in the right spot and apply and got an opportunity and fell in love with it and it really Yes, it's about coffee, but it's more about people. And right. It's more about building relationships, and so that that got me initially hooked. And I've had a couple other careers. I worked in pro sports for a couple of years. I did medical device sales for seven years. Um, oh. But coffee kept bringing me back because of the the love for for people as well. So um, that's really what inspired this. And we decided to say, hey, let's go for it and make it a make it a reality. So, what did you do in sports? Uh, so I worked for a minor league baseball team doing anything you could imagine under the sun. You wear you wear a, a dozen hats um, and are paid less than minimum wage. Right. Uh, it's minor I, leagues. Yeah, yeah, right. And then I worked in the NBA for the Sacramento Kings. Uh, did ticket sales for them. Uh, that was my first full time job out of college, and I thought if I couldn't play in the league, then I'd work in it. Right. Um, <laughs> that also wasn't enjoyable. Um, you know, you're, you you go to a, a Charlotte Hornets game here, and it's like, hey, enter to win this autographed jersey. Nobody really wins; they just turn over your information to, to the sales. Oh, owner. is it so? Is it a scam? Yeah. Somebody wins the jersey. Someone right? gets it, but like the other 200 people that didn't get it are getting a call the next day. Hey, you came out to a game. Do you want to come to 12 more? Oh. Um, so yeah, that was. I didn't enjoy uh, that aspect of it. I mean, I, I performed very well while I was there, but I didn't enjoy it the way I hoped I would. So. Um, that kind of led me to to revisit and assess my options. Did you uh, play basketball growing up as a kid? Yeah, yeah, I played all the way through college, um, and that, that helped pay for part of school. And um, yeah, wasn't ever going to be uh, a professional per se, but um, loved it. That's my that's my first love from a sports perspective. That and college football now. So yeah, um, I'm a huge Oregon Ducks fan. So uh, can I just keep that? That got beat by Auburn, right? Yeah, God. <laughs> that, that one hurt. That one cost me some money. Um, yeah, played great for three quarters and then just uh, shit, the bed. shit the bed in the fourth quarter. And now I get to listen to another year of SEC talk. And it, yeah. Isn't it annoying? Uh-huh. It's, it's over the top. But until we win a game as the Pac-12, we can't really say anything. Right. 
There's a guy out there I'd like just to shut his pie hole. And that's Paul. Is it Paul Feinbaum? Oh yeah, the, oh. the SEC. Yeah, oh. he's, he's terrible. He's the worst. I don't guy. know what's worse, him or the uh, some of the callers he gets into his show. <laughs> It's enough, like enough already. You know, yes, we know you like the SEC because you're paid by the SEC. Yeah. Yes. Beating the drum. We, just to death and then roll that <laughs> thing over and beating it some more. So what part of California? Are you from California originally? I'm originally from Oregon. Oregon. Um, and then I've been in California for the last 11 years. So do you still have a residence So there? I live I live 70% in Mooresville and 30% in California. Holy my shit. wife and my two-month-old daughter live in California. Oh. So I go 10, 11 days out here, and then five back. Um, I mean, that's been the rotation for a year and a half. How's uh, that? Uh, it's a lot of travel, yeah. but I mean, we're, it's worth the, the short-term sacrifice now to hopefully build something long-term. Oh, so, sure. Short-term pain for long-term gain, right? Yeah. That's yeah. what I tell my wife all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. That's right. But like, that's the, you know, for us... Uh, my wife's been supportive, and she's willing to to let let a kid chase a dream. There you and, go, and uh, and build something for our for our family long term. Nice. So, um, it's interesting in California. There's it. Most people think, I guess, depending on where you live, uh, northern or southern, it's hot. But people drink coffee. People drink coffee in Florida. It doesn't matter if the weather is hot. Even when it's hot here, I drink a half a pot a day. Yeah, like today. I would even venture to say that I think hot weather is even more advantageous because. A lot of the stuff that we sell is is iced and mm -hmm. blended or frozen, and so those are also quicker to prepare than hot coffee. Well, I take it back. Regular hot coffee can be done pretty quickly, but if we're going to make a latte or a mocha, something that requires steaming milk, that yep. takes even more time. So iced iced or blended can be done even quicker. So I'm a huge fan of warm weather. When it's warm outside, people want something cold to to relax or get themselves refreshed. That's that's. Right in our wheelhouse. And see, I'm the, I'm the opposite, man. I do not drink iced coffee. I don't okay. I don't drink cold coffee. I got first introduced to drinking. You have a bad experience? Uh, like everyone has a bad experience with the Jaeger? No, I maybe? don't think so. I have had some bad experience with the Jaeger. <laughs> That's a true story. But uh, I was first introduced to drinking coffee uh, when I was living in Key Biscayne at the time down in Florida. Okay. And I worked at a gym, a little local health club there, and I thought these ladies were nuts coming in with their espressos or cups of coffee while on the treadmill or the elliptical <laughs> drinking coffee. And I thought, they've lost their freaking minds, man. It's 95 degrees out there. Yeah. I'm sweating to death inside in the AC. Yeah. But then I tried it, and then I get it. And then, you know, years later, research this and that, caffeine's good for you pre-workout or during your workout and all that other stuff. So, But no, I enjoy, I, I do enjoy coffee, and What's your go-to coffee? Oh, dude, you're going to be disappointed. Okay. <laughs> when I tell people, they're just like, what? Yep, uh, pretty much whatever's on sale at the grocery store, either okay. Folgers or uh, Maxwell House. Okay, any creamer sugar? Or? Uh, I do. I, I'm a uh, two splashes of a hazelnut creamer. Okay. Yep, and then uh, that's All it. Right. I have it at work. Um, I may get crazy if it's on sale and get chock full of nuts. Yeah. <laughs> If you're feeling risky. <laughs> if I'm feeling risky, I'm like, all right, I'll splurge. It's 79 <laughs> more cents. Fuck. All right, I'll That's get it. That's awesome. Um, but no, that. I've never really fallen into the – I do have a grinder. I got some beans okay. uh, for – got to get you some beans to grind at home then. Yeah, well, I have a, a, a friend of mine who actually bought a coffee roaster. He was on the show a little over a year ago. Uh, he was starting to roast, and then he decided – well, they were planning for this, but they moved to Italy okay. and sold their roaster. And I just talked to them uh, last week, and they're living the dream out there. They got a couple. Yeah, I feel really bad for him. Y you shouldn't. He, he's a super <laughs> cool living dude. Living in wine country. And living in wine country, and they're growing their own uh, lemons and other fruits and other, like, That's living awesome. off the land. Yeah, he sounds so happy. Good for, them. Good, for the, good for them. Yeah, but uh, but you know he sent me like he was trying to figure it out because he has sold some beans to like the local farmers market and was selling his yeah. coffee there, and uh, so he would send them to me and I would be his guinea pig. Yeah. And uh, so I bought a little grinder. Yeah. And uh, but no, I enjoy it. I'll, I'll do it. Okay. You know, we'll get you some. I'll send you some to the house and uh, let you do a taste test there and tell me how it stacks up to Folgers and a little <laughs> bit of hazelnut creamer. <laughs> Um, speaking of, you brought us a sample of some stuff here now, I right? I did, yeah. So I brought you guys a couple of our uh, signature energy drinks. Um, so these are infused. We've got about 15 different flavors. Uh, the one I've got for you today is a blue raspberry flavor. All right. So it uses uh, our signature energy drink with the uh, flavor of your choice. So in this case, we're going blue raspberry. Okay. It's a little deconstructed here because I, I brought it portable to allow you to have a chance to enjoy it here. This way it wouldn't go flat for you. 
All right. Awesome. But we are now in business. Right. Um, you can mix and match. We're about to come out with a secret menu that's got a lot of different Ooh. flavors, um, different flavor combinations. Um, but this one's just straight up blue raspberry. This is, this is popular with the kids. Julius, so. you have one too. What's he drinking on? He's got a cherry lime flavored cherry. one. So, um, yeah, give it the official taste test. Mm. You know what? That's good. I could drink that. Cool part is you can customize it, right? So if you want, if there's a certain flavor you like or a certain combination, yeah. you can make. I mean, there's endless combinations that you can that you can try. So blue raspberry is popular. Passion pomegranate's a good one. Mm. Cherry lime. Um, if you want to get real weird, uh, there's one that tastes kind of like cotton candy. Yeah. Blue raspberry and white chocolate, which you really think would go into an energy drink, but it tastes phenomenal. Um, so, so is this yeah. your energy drink? You have this bottled and can or canned no, so or what? This is this is a is a brand called Blue Mania that we use out of Texas. Okay. Um, spoiler alert: We are going to uh, potentially start bottling our own in the future. Get out of here! Um, yeah, I think once we hit a certain volume, it makes sense for us to bring that cost in house sure. and try to do that. Um, plus, I'd love to have a clutch brand, branded energy drink. Why wouldn't you? Um, yeah. So uh, that's something hopefully in the future that we'll be able to to look at doing. Um, but right now we use this. We're super happy with the quality of this. We we tried a lot of different energy drink brands first. Yep. Um, wanted to make sure we liked not only the flavor by itself, but how it stood up when it was mixed with flavors too. So I'm uh this is very smooth. And when I drink energy drinks, I always go sugar free. Yep. I don't know if this one is sugar free or not. It's not, but I do have sugar free. But this one does not taste as sugary or syrupy. Does that make sense? Sure. So when you have a what I call a fully loaded yeah. uh, energy drink, <laughs> so yeah. it doesn't give me that thick like saliva taste yep you know so that's good yeah like you yeah, know what I've... this is missing man if you threw some vodka in this whew, man. Am, I, am i allowed off the record to say that that also tastes delicious uh, <laughs> supposedly yeah <laughs> according to the research allegedly according to uh consumers we have um yeah that's no that's 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 your new spin on a uh on a vodka red bull that's exactly right so let me ask you uh this too speaking of the energy drink space i mean it's got to be pretty competitive and tough to get your i mean obviously you'll be able to sell it in your own store yeah but if you wanted to branch out further than that and to grocery stores or yeah i think i think that's a it's a great point and and we uh something that we would potentially assess it is a very competitive space um, there's, I feel like there's new energy drink brands coming out every couple months. There's one that just came out called Outlaw Energy. It's right. making a big push that Jason Aldean is one of the big investors in that. Um, Bastard. It's kind of kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, when we get to that point, we got to find out what you know what differentiates us. And this is something that we'll do in the Flavor Lab when we make it. Yeah. Is how are we different? How are we unique? Ooh, um, the Flavor Lab. Listen to this. Oh yeah. Man. Yeah. Where is, is the Flavor Lab in your garage? It is not. It is an actually accredited <laughs> warehouse. Uh, no, there's a bunch of There's a couple we're familiar with in Kentucky um, and Tennessee that we may go explore mm-hmm. to see if we can do this. I've so. been to a lot of coffee shops. My, my girls like the coffee yeah. stuff. But I, I've never really seen energy drinks as an option. This I, is, I like that because I, I'm an energy drink guy yep. more so than coffee. But completely. My, I think it's, it's completely... Uh, missed by some of our biggest competitors this is something that you cannot get at starbucks yeah, or duncan yeah, or yeah, i was getting ready to say i never see you know yeah those, or nectar or something like that so um yeah it's and because of all the different combinations and customizations it's mm-hmm. definitely something that makes us unique yeah um and allows us to uh to kind of fill a fill a gap where if someone says hey i love this certain flavor of of energy drink well you only love what what's available right there's only so many different flavors they make in the in in the grocery store, there might be eight or 10 different ones. But with this, I mean, there's so many different combinations that you can do. And the cool part is if you want to try a new one with us and you don't like it, there's no risk. We'll make you another one for free. Really? Like, yeah, we're not going to, I'm not going to be like, well, sorry, that's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Like we'll, we'll make you the right one until you are loving exactly what you have. Man, this is truly sound like a no brainer. So do you take the, the basic product and then you add different flavors to it like yeah like, yeah so we'll it'll we'll like take that the base straight out of the can right yeah the base energy drink and then i i pre-added a little bit of flavor for you guys yeah. there oh from, you already had, yeah. put i put the flavor in the cup you. there for oh, you okay. yeah I got you. um just to just to make sure you guys could try a couple different oh, okay. different yeah. kinds but yeah i mean you can add, i mean there's strawberry peach orange watermelon lime raspberry blue raspberry We've got a lot, so a lot of customization. We, we, there's a coffee shop that opened up almost a year ago in Statesville called Sky Mountain Coffee, and yeah. he was on just a few weeks ago. Yeah, awesome and guy. He, yeah, he is. He was a very interesting guy, too, and he, too, comes from – he has a, a medical background. He was in uh, the pharmaceutical yeah. uh, industry for a long time. But, uh, you know, 
what I thought was really neat is he roasts. He has a roasting place here in the States where he roasts his own beans. Now, what about you guys? Where do you roast your beans? So we love our roaster. We have a roaster out of Washington State, just mm-hmm. south of Seattle. We've known them for four or five years um, from being in the industry. Uh, the roast, we have one espresso blend we use. It is fair trade and it's certified organic. That was super important to us yeah. um, for being sustainable. But the roast we have is a medium blend. Um, it is super smooth. It's balanced. It's not going to be too acidic. It's not too, um, uh, what's the word I want to use? I, not necessarily like if you go to Starbucks and it's bitter per se. Yeah, exactly. Um, they over roast that. Yep. Um, we're, we, we, John and I blind taste tested 30 different roasts before we open. And we said, price doesn't matter. Let's find out what tastes the best as an Americano, like as a regular coffee, as a latte, like across the board, what is the best? And naturally it was one of the most expensive ones on there, but of course, um, that's okay. That's, we want quality and, uh, and we're, yeah, we're super happy with that. So we've, we've been approached by, uh, many local roasters, including Sky Mountain, um, about potentially earning some of our business. And we appreciate local sure. roasters. Um, I think for us, as we grow and scale and go to outside cities or outside states, they will no longer be quote unquote local mm-hmm. for us because we'll be in a lot of places. Right. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a, it's an art and a science. Oh. Um, we, it's not our forte. So that's not our focus um, on roasting. Um, quality is, is super important to us, but yeah, we're very happy with the roaster we have. It was, it's interesting, you know, listening to him and, and you guys, when you talk about, you know, the quality is once you figure out whatever, you know, the, the taste profile or palette or whatever, once you figure out, ah, that's it, the computer or the software knows that. So you can make that same batch of coffee every time, mm-hmm. which is, you know, it, it's awesome, like the technology, yeah. but it's almost like cheating in a way. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you got the answer like, to the test. Well, and the, I mean, the your great grandpa didn't do it that way. Sure, yeah. And the, the other variable too is the actual green coffee bean that they're getting, right? Where wherever they're sourcing that from, mm-hmm. whether it's Central South America, Africa, um, that matters too because that's ultimately what's going to get you know they're going to roast it and they're going to put their their touch or their spin on it. But that core product that they're getting is crucial too. Um, so that it's, yeah, it's very, it's very interesting to me. Um, again, it's not our, it's not our specialty. Right. Um, we'll, we'll let someone else who's more of an expert do that. And then we'll focus on the, the part we feel like we're an expert on. Perfect. Yeah. Now, how did you guys come up with the name clutch? Love telling the story. Okay. Good. So, Love. I want to hear it. Here's the deal. Uh, I'm a huge sports fan. Um, and when a player steps up in crunch time and delivers, they are, in essence, clutch. Mm-hmm. I want us to be that for our customers every single day, whether they are going to work, whether they're coming back, they're picking up the kids they're going on a trip, whatever it is, I want us to be there for them. Um, and so that when we talk to our employees, it's like, we want you to be clutch, like be, be there for them, be present in the moment, um, invest in your customer and it will come back to you tenfold. So that's, it's funny that we landed in Mooresville, Race City, USA. So people are like, oh, is it like the clutch on a car? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And whatever uh, you want it to be, man. That, that works as well. But yeah, it, it really came from, from trying to be um, there for people anytime they need us. So how did you land in Mooresville? Of all the places, in yeah. sunny California, yeah. <laughs> Florida, anywhere, you landed in Mooresville. Um, so we, Which, thank you, but yeah, how did yeah. that happen? No, this is, I mean, this is... Clutch will forever and always be like Mooresville will be uh, where where it got its roots and its core. So, um, and it's a phenomenal community to to be a part of. Uh, we were targeting younger, growing demographics uh, from cities, and we targeted Charlotte and Nashville out of the gate that mm-hmm. we felt were underserved mm-hmm. from a drive through coffee perspective, uh, mainly just being Starbucks and Dunkin'. And so we targeted those. And I was actually on my honeymoon in Australia when. A broker that we were working with here hit us up and said, "Hey, I've got a guy that wants that has two currently open drive-through coffee places that wants to retire. So this is about as turnkey as it gets, right? Right. Yes, we'll put our own branding. Yes, we might renovate inside, but it's ready to go. The drive-through permits are there. The city already is good with it. And so my two uh, business partners and I talked and said, "Yeah, let's do this." So I signed the papers while I was on my honeymoon in Australia to buy the two human being locations and develop clutch. 
Honey, congratulations. We are on our honeymoon. I love you so much. And by the way, we just bought two coffee shops. <laughs> by the way, we're now house poor. So. Right. So, <laughs> cheers. Yeah. No, she was loving it. Because when I first met her, uh, we were both doing medical sales. And when I told her I was considering leaving that and taking a 75% pay cut to start this, she's like, so you want me to marry you? Like, this is like <laughs> this is your plan to, to impress me? Um, so she was skeptical at first, but then after she got more comfortable and saw the traction that's on the West coast, it's a lot more saturated out yep. there. and the potential for us to do what we want to do and be a, a unique brand. She, she's all, all on board now. So I, if you ask her, like if you ask me, we own X percent of the company. If you yep. ask her, I own half of that and she owns half of that. That's so right. She's very, uh, prideful in sharing with people that she is a, uh, as an owner of clutch coffee. So. Absolutely. Yeah. As she should be. But you know, behind every, what strong man's a stronger woman. Yeah. Happy wife, happy life. That's right. <laughs> you know, I couldn't be doing this without my wife who's at home right now with the twins running around being sweet, of course, <laughs> cause they're never out of their frame. Like when I left, um, so, so how did you guys work your way down to Florida? Like, how does that pop up? Like, Greensboro, I understand, but then it's like, pow, Florida. what part of Florida, if you can say? Uh, yeah, so South Florida. We're looking in the greater Miami-Fort Lauderdale area. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so, really, that's kind of driven by uh, Charlotte is in a massive growth phase, but it's all new build. For the most part, it's new mm-hmm. build. So, Florida is has a lot of what they call second and third generation sites so previous businesses were there they've gone out the buildings are available so a lot of that infrastructure is already taken care of drive-through permits all the red tapes already there is already cut through we can go in and renovate the building and go Um, so that's one part of it the other part is it's a very dense population Mm -hmm. Um, so you got a lot more people in a congregated area than in some areas in you know in north Carolina. and that's not to say i mean greensboro charlotte we are actively looking in a lot of major regions in North Carolina, and we want to continue to grow here, but we also don't want to limit ourselves just to what the market will bear here. Right. We want to we want to grow. So, um, and I think we'll be able to establish a, another strong foothold down there to to really grow the brand overall. And part and your brand is drive through, right? Can yep. you walk in? No, nope, drive through only. Um, future future ones, you know, depending on the situation, may have a walk up window or potentially, okay. um, you know. If it's uh, what they call an end cap where you've got a drive through that wraps around the backside Mm -hmm. and there's a small walk-in space, that might possibly happen. But as it stands now, our bread and butter is drive through only. And was that part of what you guys, your initial vision? It was like, I want to drive through. Or is it something that kind of evolved? No, I think that was the vision from the start because uh, our internal operations are such that we can move a high amount of volume in a very quick amount of time. Um, We were actually doing some... Our, our internal market research on ourselves last week uh, to see what our times are, the average time for a car to go through. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we were averaging at our, we did this during our peak hours when we're busy 7 to 9 a.m. Um, and our turn times per car were about 48 seconds. So 48 seconds from the time you... Uh, Dude, yeah, I quick. can't even pour my own cup of coffee in 48 right? seconds. Um, and part of that is, that, you know, if you've been to Chick-fil-A, they have someone outside who's taking that order. Yep. So we have a mobile runner who's outside with an iPad that relays everything back in real time. So it's not a situation where they have to put in all the components and then they send the order through. The moment they hit the button that says large or hot, it goes through instantaneously. So they can see that and they can get a head start on building that with the team we have inside. So we're very efficient with our operation and I think that allows us to hopefully have a successful model to to grow at a high volume. You know, it's interesting uh, that you mentioned Chick-fil-A because earlier when you're talking about you want your employees to be engaged and, you know, that you want them to be clutch. Yeah. Yeah. How, obviously, everyone should model <laughs> after Chick-fil-A, yeah. right? Because they have the best customer service. Yep. How do you guys keep your employees uh, upbeat, engaged, positive? How do you make them feel like they're a part of the team? Yeah. Uh, it really starts with setting the right culture. And it's a top-down thing where John and I believe in working hard and playing hard. So the environment we set is not one that is uh, extremely tense. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very easygoing, but at the same time, we work our asses off. Um, but we want to have a lot of fun. So the, the, we have a surround sound stereo inside and out, um, and it's got they get to pick the playlist. The, the two rules are that it's not slow and it's not explicit. So it can't be sad. Like it's got to be positive, upbeat. 
um, but they get to make their own playlist and, and play the music that they want. So really for us, it's about creating a family environment. We will do a lot of team bonding stuff outside of that. We went and played laser tag two weeks ago, went bowling, um, doing things together that allows us to bond together as a team and have each other's back and not just be, okay, we, we work together, but like we're also friends outside of that. Um, so setting that culture is super important. That is the most valuable asset we have is our culture. And we have, I, I could probably count a dozen customers who've shared like, hey, you guys are like the Chick-fil-A of coffee. Hey, and that's a massive compliment. I'll take that all day. Sure. Um, we actually just snagged one of the Chick-fil-A employees last week who was giving us great service going through the line. We're like, hey, you are clutch. Like this is, and set up an interview and hired him three days later. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chick-fil-A. Yeah. St- yeah, still have the best chicken sandwich, but uh um, yeah, it, it really, you know, they've done a phenomenal job of scale. That's the hardest thing is you could have one or two locations that have a great culture, mm-hmm. but can you scale that on a massive oh. level? And they've done that successfully. How? So, like, what's the secret? I think they're very intentional with what they do. They don't just talk about creating a certain environment. They walk it and live it and breathe it every mm-hmm. single day. And you ha- it has to be that way. It starts not only with the owners, but with the managers, with our shift leads, with your empowering even your your regular employees. I mean, our, our employees are, are put in a position where if someone comes through and they're having a bad day or their dog died, their wife left them, whatever it might be, our employees in that moment can take care of that customer and give them a free drink. They don't have to ask for permission. They don't have to ask me, the manager. In that moment, be present and take care of them and deliver that customer service that goes above and beyond. So I think it's really uh, trying to trying to empower them and teach them life skills that they can take beyond clutch um, to do other things. Life so, skills? Yeah, yeah. We're trying to trying to trying to make a little bit of a difference here. That's that's trying to bring huge. in uh, you know some some bad habits at an early age or teaching responsibility and reliability and holding people accountable. How old are you again? I'm 33. You're 33. Yeah. Man, you're young. And for you to be 33 and teaching kids life skills, that's great. You know, it seems like. The younger generation is kind of harder to teach them those life skills. There's a lot of, uh, um, they come in with some certain expectations or they, uh, they assume that, you know, because they want to do something they're going to automatically get to. They don't, some of them, not all of them, but some of them will, will think that they're entitled to certain things and, yes. um, give them a, a little dose of reality in a, in a polite way. Um, <laughs> but also, you know, just let them know like, Hey, like, we're on Lombardi time. Like if you're if you're late, that's unacceptable. If you're on time, you're you're really you really should be early. Right. And, and so we we try to instill that. And when we first opened, it was definitely a challenge for us making sure people were reliable. And so we had to protect the culture. We had to weed it out. So there were John and I let certain people go. We we promoted them to customer um, when they weren't <laughs> when they weren't cutting it. And so. I like that. Uh, we were opening, closing, like we told each other, like we would rather spend 18 hours in, in the stand and do this the right way than compromise our, our quality and our ethics on it. Damn. So yeah. that's, that's pretty sound. I mean, I run a little, uh, junk company uh, on the side and, you know, up until recently I've been getting down and dirty and lifting and, yeah. you know, I can't ask someone to go do something that I've not done or I wouldn't do myself. And so I think um, as we grow, um, I think it's important for people to see the boss or whatever you want to call ourselves yeah. um, down in the shit and getting dirty and doing whatever it needs to be done to get the job done. And that's where we always try to, we believe in servant leadership and leading by example. And so if we're in the stands, if we're working, or even if I'm making a, I'm in there for 20 minutes making an appearance, I'm the first one to take the trash out, right? Or to mm-hmm. mop the floor, like the stuff that they may not want to do. I don't even ask anybody, I just do it, right? Because right? I'm leading by example and showing them. And I think they have a certain level of respect for us because they know that we're willing to do that and we're not just sitting back. They've, you know, a lot of them have worked at places where they had a, a poor managerial experience or someone who just told them what to do but didn't work alongside them. So we enjoy it. Like we love working in the stand and side by side with our employees, it's a ton of fun. Um, we're trying to work a little bit more on our business yeah. uh, versus always in the business now. But it's, yeah, it's it's a great environment and a great experience. And uh, yeah, just excited to provide opportunities for people, really. Yeah, you know, there's some business owners that they can't handle. Like you, you probably went to school or worked with some folks who got a promotion or whatnot, and they got this new level of um, power that came along with this job title, and they just cannot handle it. It goes through their head. They become power freaks, power hungry, and then they just start 
poo-pooing on everybody almost instantaneously. So if people have that past experience, um, it kind of leaves a you know a bad taste in your mouth. Sure, absolutely. Know? And we, I mean, we've we've had one situation where where there was a promotion that happened, and that was um, that was something that we saw that was exhibited. We we don't get it right every time, sure. And we know when we make mistakes, and so we protected the culture and um, promoted them to customer and and put the put the right person, hopefully what we thought was the right person in the in the position. So, it, you know, we we tell them that you you have to earn the respect of your of your crew. Right. And the only way you're going to do that is by leading by example and and being, you know, being that exemplary person every single day. There's not you don't you don't get to take a day off mentally. You don't get to choose when you have a great attitude. You got to bring it every day. That's it. That's you got to be clutch. Day. Yeah, got to be clutch. Speaking of clutch, my uh, neighbor and uh, one of the sponsors of the show, Casey Tate, said it'd be real clutch of you if you popped one of these bad boys up in Statesville, so he didn't have to drive to Mooresville yes. to get coffee all the time. <laughs> yeah, Statesville is absolutely on the radar. We have quite a few regulars that come to our 150 location from Statesville. Um, so keep your eyes open if you see. Any building that's available, or or a piece of land that we could purchase, <clears throat> um, <laughs> that's on a busy big street. One. Uh, so that's another question: Would you guys would you uh, build from the ground up, mm-hmm. or are you mainly looking for established building? Yeah, no. I mean, if if there's an established building, that's great. That's the easiest road. Mm-hmm. Um, but we are open to purchasing land and then building. Uh, one of our two partners is uh, um, in a different earning stratosphere than we are, so he can purchase and uh, and then allow us to help build. And we've got some awesome, excuse me, prototypes that we just got last week from our architect that are really badass that are going to be very cutting edge with showing them what the new clutch buildings will look like. Um, yeah. yeah, they're cool. There, well, Highway One Fifteen. <laughs> I, I, he will tell you 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 should see the traffic backed up like five miles at 115 on the mornings. Okay. I mean, it's insane that there's not a fast food restaurant on this exit. Well, if it's that backed up, it's like people know they're going to be in that traffic for a while, so they might as well get the coffee or the drink they want and then settle back in for the run. No, I thought to myself many times because I remember seeing the, the human being yeah. down in Mooresville that that would be a great uh, addition to states yeah. right there because uh, – yeah, you got a couple of gas stations, but that's gas station coffee. Now, the Human Bean, were, were, is that just their only two locations? Were they also a franchise? Or a... That's a franchise. So that's a franchise based yeah. on the West Coast. Those okay. are the only two Human Bean locations on the entire East Coast. I used to live out West. Um, I remember seeing them. Really? Yeah. So they're, they, were, they were based out of uh, Oregon originally. Um, but they're all over Oregon, Washington, California, Idaho. Um, so they I, I want to say they've got, I think it's less than 100 locations, but... Pretty pretty successful uh, endeavor with what they're doing. Um, we we actually drove through as customers of the human being before we ended up buying it, just mm-hmm. to kind of we wanted to get a feel for what what current experience was being delivered. Yeah, and um, and then you know make sure that we really went above and beyond with what we do. So um, is is clutch something that in the future you would look to franchise? Potentially, potentially. Uh, I think the big thing there for us is is we have some some high level mentors who have given us some sound advice uh, of some of the potential pitfalls mm-hmm. of that. And sure. the biggest thing I think is losing culture. And, you know, you could put up a hundred of these, but if you have people that are just throwing money at it or parking it as a, as an investment versus actually personally being invested in the success of that, right. um, it can go downhill quickly. So it may be a different structure that is similar to a, to a franchise, but we really want people who want to work um, on and in it and not just have it as a passive as a passive income so it's it's about having the right operators the right people and that gets tough when you have a franchise right because if they can stroke a check yeah that's right. exactly right so we, and we want to grow people i want to i want to provide an opportunity for people to grow and make this not just a stop along the way but to make this a career so if they really enjoy what they're doing i want to provide an opportunity that they can go from being a manager to a regional manager to running their own stores i mean that's 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 what I want to see for people who can, you know, if they're really good at it and they enjoy it, let's let's create the opportunity. It is like Chick Fil A. Yeah, you were talking <laughs> about Chick Fil A earlier. I know yeah. that that's one of the main reasons they're so successful is they they they're incredibly they, they give their franchise they grow from within. From within, yeah, yeah. it's five thousand dollars for a Chick Fil A franchise. Yeah, and one, and what? Chick- yes, five thousand dollars. Get out of here! But they pick who they give it to. They they it's five thousand dollars to buy in, and then they finance the the franchisee. For the building and well, the to your point, until uh, you pay it back, 
And it's, oh, it's gotcha. a real, yeah, it's a real interesting way, but it, it's worked for them. That's yeah. for sure. Well, and, and to your point about with your, with your business, you know, people are going to respect you if you've done all the jobs, if you've done everything. Right. And so having people come up through the system, I think is very beneficial because they know all the different facets versus someone coming from the outside who right. may be invested in other franchises and has preconceived notions of how it should go. And that's okay for what they're doing, but we're going to do it the way we think is going to be successful. So um, I want to, I want to home grow some talent. And have you noticed that, is it more of a younger generation that comes to the drive through or is it an older generation that comes to the drive through We have daily regular customers that range from 13 to 63. Oh, wow. Um, okay. So you're, we've got retirees who come through who get a regular Americano, maybe a little cream or sugar. And then we've got teenagers who are headed to school in the morning who are getting an energy drink to get all jacked up for the day. <laughs> um, so we have a really, I mean, people say, oh, what's your demographic? Like, it is all walks of life. I mean, uh, it's just a, a very wide array. So we try to make a, have a menu that where there's something for everyone, right? Mm-hmm. For kids, we've got 100% juices and Italian sodas um, and shakes or smoothies. Um, and then, you know, you've got your coffee base, the energy drink base. So try to try to appeal to everybody. And do you guys serve any sort of food or snack or anything like that? Yeah, so we've uh, all of our food is prepackaged and grab and go. So there's no prep. Gotcha. You know, as much as I would love to serve breakfast burritos, uh, we don't. That slows our time down. Right. So we don't focus on that. Uh, we partnered with Queen City Pastry, which is locally here in Mooresville. They individually wrap all of our pastries for us three times a week. Um, and so we have, I think we have banana bread, pumpkin, zucchini a bourbon pecan bar and a Ooh. chocolate coconut bar. Um, and before <laughs> us, they had never, they just did wholesale. So they had never done something like this where they were actually going to individually wrap. Everything was just by the loaf. And so when we got here, I tried a couple of different places. They had the best quality and I'm like, I'd love to partner and grow this. Um, so they took the leap of faith with us and, and have been individually wrapping. Um, so we have that, we have oatmeal um, and then some uh, gluten-free vegan bars as well. Um, so everything is just grab and go. Um, ready to rock wow so you and so you actually reached out to queen city yeah i cold called them so I, coming from medical sales like i get off to cold calling so i love that i i went out and i was like hey i want to find i want to find the best quality and then see if we can make a, a mutually beneficial partnership right um, and it's been great we've grown our our sales with them uh tremendously and and i think it's allowed them to look at like hey maybe we can do this for other businesses as well now that we're individually wrapping things um so yeah i'm very very happy with the quality and uh, they've been a, a great partner for us, and we like to be local. Right. Now, now do you guys do a lot in the community? or, or as far as, Do you do? <laughs> yeah. So uh, the three, uh, three C's of Clutch um, are customer, community, culture. And so from a community aspect, we're really big on um, supporting specific things that are local that really, really matter. And so the best example I can give you is um, when Officer Sheldon was unfortunately killed in the line of duty, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there was a lot of out, outpouring of support. People wanted to support. They wanted to donate money, but no one knew where to, where to send it to, right? The police station can't just take a, a bunch of money. We have to figure out how we, how we do this. And so um, one of our customers uh, is very closely connected with the police department. And we identified that, you know, he was very passionate about the canine program. And he had a canine um, when he was on duty. So we decided as a business to do a proceeds day where we donated 100% of our proceeds to uh, the Mooresville Police Department for the canine unit, right? And so we went into it thinking, hey, it'd be awesome if we can raise a couple thousand dollars for them. Yeah. Uh, it went viral in Mooresville um, to where we had lines of 20 to 30 cars. It was like Chick-fil-A all day. And we apologized to people for the wait, and they're like, hey, we would wait an hour for this because it's important what you guys are doing. Uh, we ended up raising eight thousand dollars that day. The money was such a large amount that they couldn't just accept it, so they had to create a nonprofit organization oh, to man. accept it, which is now called Sheldon's Canines. Uh, that spiraled into other local businesses contributing, and now, uh, and this is all since May, uh, they've raised or they've generated over forty five thousand dollars in donations. Oh, that's fantastic! And so this will be something that will be ongoing. We actually are on the board of directors to help make sure that this thing goes the right way. But it's something that blossomed out of an idea that an act of kindness. Yeah. Yeah. You know, isn't that awesome? Um, It's good to have, know that there's still good people out there. You you gotta, you gotta be part of it. It's, it's for us, it's not just about having a successful business. We really want to be part of the community. 
Oh, we had um, Andrew Donnell on last week, who is the uh, chaplain, and he's also the uh, the founder of the First Responder Support Services. Okay. So he was friends with uh, Officer Sheldon, and he's they actually are helping now with getting uh, these dogs to help with emergency service personnel uh, who uh, are struggling and going through difficult things where the dogs and can come and help uh, sense that and sure. calm them down. And uh, he actually has a dog in training that he's going to acquire. And he, I think he's named it Jordan. And But they've got three additional dogs that are ready for a home for uh, uh, veterans. Oh, wow. okay. And these are $50,000 dogs who are fully trained waiting on a home. Um, to go to a vet to help with their you know, PTSD or anxiety, whatever it yeah. is. Um, so it was, they were on last week and, and talking about that. And, um, you know, it's, it's something that he's done, that he saw a need for people who uh, respond uh, to horrific calls, um, you know, children hurt, pass away, people shot, mangled, um, and even emergency department um personnel and hospital personnel people deal with a lot of stuff you know and they pr- and they push it push it push it down and keep going to the next patient or the next call and this and that but uh so they're doing a great benefit uh to the community to keep these people fresh and um in the right state of mind and have them a place an outlet to go to if they need to talk because they're having a tough time absolutely so th- then uh, that act of kindness and then you know you guys think you know wh- what can we do we can do this and then it grows into this huge thing and now you're on the board of directors for it yeah no it's 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 so important to us and it was a cause that we very firmly believed in and supporting um, people who sacrifice. And, you know, we we want to think about having a a potential bad day at work, like talk about, you know, someone who has to risk their life every single day. I mean, this is, this is the least we can do to, to honor them. And so, and, and have something that's a living legacy, hopefully for them that can continue to, to do a lot of good um, for the, for the canines and for the police department as a whole. So, I mean, it was, again, we, we thought, you know, hey, we could raise a little bit. And, the, like, the dogs need vests. The dogs don't have bulletproof vests. And they all needed that. And the vests are, like, $1,000 a piece. So we're like, hey, if we can raise enough for a couple of those, that'd be awesome. Right. Well, now they're all going to get vested. The cars are now going to have these. There's a, a pop lock they can have that will that will uh, allow the officer to open it where the dog can get out. Some of those were broken in the vehicles, and they didn't have the money to do it. Now those oh, can man. be fixed. So the, there's a ton of cool stuff that's going to come off of that that really is going to honor something that he was so passionate about. And so for us, like we are strictly the vehicle that can help drive that positive. Right. I mean, the community did it, right? We didn't, I mean, we helped, but like the community did that, right? That was everybody who came through and donated. And, and it was just so cool to see. I mean, it was so, so rewarding. You know, it's interesting that you don't think about the canines needing a bulletproof vest and it costs a thousand bucks or the little lock that's in the car that's broken. I think if, if people truly knew how, uh, maybe depleted is not the right word, but maybe depleted some of the equipment and stuff that officers and first responders and even fire department, the equipment that they or how outdated yep. it is. I mean, they would probably be shocked, appalled, and then scared like, oh, God, how, you know, how are, are they, they going to protect me? How that? are they going to protect yeah. me? You know, the fire truck has t- duct tape on it, keeping <laughs> the doors together. And yeah. that was true here in States, wasn't it, right? Yes, sir. See? Uh, but they did yeah. receive one new truck, right? Yeah, but they still uh, still lacking in a few departments. But Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think if people knew the people were out there protecting, serving, and keeping us safe, and um, we would... I think we would almost be ashamed in a way. Like, where what's going ashamed, on? Yeah. You know, how sure. can we help? How can the city help? How can the city of Mooresville, the Statesville, yeah. Troutman, everybody, how can they pull together and give these guys what they really need to to perform their job and to keep us all happy and safe? Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's – you nailed it on the head with that. And, and we were always looking for the right opportunity to be able to help. And so, I mean, we, we had a, a employee of ours who had to have major – life altering surgery, like a six figure surgery. And so we did a, we did a day where we donated everything to her and we wrote her a check to help wow. do our small portion to contribute to that. Sure. Um, and so that was, you know, we, we wanted to be able to support her and help her in a, in a tough time. October is breast cancer awareness month. And so we'll be donating. Um, we'll do a, a some different unique um, fundraisers to help support uh, breast cancer research and just really try, like I said, trying to be a, a vehicle for good. But after having the experience we had with officer Sheldon Mm -hmm. and um, the proceeds day we did there, what it tells us is that the community 
in the greater Lake Norman area is incredibly strong. And I think people were so proud of what, of, you know, how they came together. So I'm excited for future opportunities. Um, you know, if we have a chance to do something in, in a positive way, I think the, the town will show up in droves to do that. Well, I think, I think you're exactly right. You, you, you showed and you proved, you know, you provided the vehicle and they showed up. I mean, it takes effort for people to get off the couch Go get in the car, yeah. drive, and sit in line. line. Yep. You know, this wasn't a 48-second cup of coffee. No, no. Right? No, this was a little longer than that. And and I was actually, I, I was, I think I worked seven or eight hours that day, but I was outside taking orders. And I was, I was literally, you know, we have a certain expectation of ourselves. And I apologize on the, on the wait. And people were like, what you guys are doing matters way more than us waiting in line. Like, we don't give a shit. We don't care. See? Um, it's and, good, though. Yeah, it, it was, it was. It was just a, it was a super cool day, and it, it blew our expectations out of the water. I mean, we were we had a, a certain idea, and it, it crushed it. It's sad that something tragic like that, um, you get to see how a community really pulls together. Mm -hmm. You know, you would like for a community, uh, all communities, to pull together like that all the time, and not just over some some tragedy. You know. Um, but life happens, and people get busy, and then you get distracted, you know. So it's good that uh, that you guys are doing what what you're doing, and uh, hopefully keeping that momentum moving forward with other things that you're working on, like with breast cancer awareness and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, anything else as far as what people out there who have never tried uh, clutch coffee, what they what they need to know, or what you want them to know? They're missing out. Of course. Um, yeah, I I think the best thing I could say is uh, is Tell us when you come by. Try it. Try it out for the first time. Let us know it's your first time. Um, secretly, we'll probably hook up your first drink for free. And uh, but tell us exactly what you normally get, what you normally like. And and our baristas are trained to help make suggestions um, and and to be able to to help you leave 110 percent satisfied with what you got. Not only from a product standpoint, but from your experience and from a time perspective. Because you know we. One of the reasons why we, we pride ourselves on being so fast is because our customer's time is the most valuable as well. It's not just for us. It's for them. Um, they don't want to wait 10 minutes in line when they're trying to go to work. If they can get in and out in two minutes, awesome. They know they can count on us to right. do that. So, um, yeah, I just encourage people to come check it out. There's, there's something for everybody on the menu. Um, it's very, uh, very vast. And uh, we've got some cool, unique things that you really just can't get anywhere else. As I see, both of you have finished your energy drinks. So. Oh, dude, it was delicious, <laughs> man. I'm not kidding. That was going to be the real test. Yeah, like, yeah. they said they liked it, but did they, did they oh, finish it? Oh, okay. if it wasn't, if we were on air, I'd be slurping. <laughs> you know, it was, it was delicious. And how can they find you guys? On social media or a website? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, Instagram and Facebook, um, at Clutch Coffee Bar. Um, as of 48 hours ago, we are officially now on Twitter. So we'll see what happens there. Wow. Um, just to cover all of our bases. But Instagram and Facebook um, are the main two. I kind of say that Instagram is usually 35 and under and Facebook is usually 35 and over. Um, <laughs> but, but you can't have one without the other. No, no. That Well, especially now that one owns the other. So That's um, right. So, yeah. Uh, but those are the two main platforms and, and we're, we're very active on there. Um, and, and not only, you know, sharing what we have to offer, but also just discussing different community events and highlighting things that are going on and um, really trying to be a pillar in the community. That's a big thing for us. Well, we appreciate it, and uh, the city of Mooresville and even Statesville appreciates what you're doing. And uh, and thank you. We look forward to – you know, come back. I would come back to. sometime, man. Let's do it. Let's run and it back. Let's do it, And because uh, I want to hear about uh, what you guys are going to end up doing in Florida and Greensboro yeah. and then Lord knows, maybe even Statesville one day. So uh, Tony, you let me know. You find you find the right the right piece of dirt or the right building, and uh, we're we're ready to move. All right. I know some people, man. I know some people who who might know a couple <laughs> spots. All right, hey, I appreciate it. Thank you again, Darren, for coming by. Everybody, check out Clutch Coffee, and uh, thank you to States Vegas uh, Clothing Company for providing me with all of my t shirts this uh, season. Thanks to States Vegas Radio for always allowing me to crash here once a week, and uh, to Casey Tate at. Farm Bureau Insurance, and to Dustin McCrary at McCrary Law, and to Black Flag Holster Company for your concealed weapon needs. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next week. Appreciate it.